Leg clock down to two, down to one. Gannon takes the snap. A little hybrid mix there. Nice read to the right side. Kamara, feet inbound. Here we go. Who's going to be more clutch? Is it Wesley's offense or Drini's defense? Drini, Joka, looking to keep his hopes of a belt alive. Nice. Drini gets the best of stop. Come on, He's Bingley. got Finley. Come on. Ten, five. He's down into the end Come zone. On. Wesley with the clutch stop. score. Are you guys tired of spending your hard-earned money just to get terrible pack odds? Well, look no further. Visit my sponsor, EasyMutt.com, for the fastest, cheapest, and most reliable Madden 21 coins. Use code JTIBS for 5% off your purchase. That drive by Wesley, that offense, the whole game was just deadly. And I'm sure you guys wish you had an offense like that, or at least could get semi-close. But today, I'm going to be breaking down a favorite play of his, and ultimately what really won him that game, probably the second game of the year against Drini right now. Let's get to it. Yo, what's going on, guys? Jay Tibbs back with another video. You guys already know the drill before the video. Make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Guys, first off, Thank you so much for almost to 11,000 subscribers, a little less than a month. But also, comment down below for a chance to win some free Madden Ultimate Team coins I will be giving away. The word you want to comment down below is Wesley, because we're going to be going over why Pro Madden player Wesley is regarded as the best offensive mind in the world and breaking down some of his favorite plays. But if you saw that game, Joke versus John Beast, after that, literally was this Drini Wesley game. That would literally, that would have been the game of the year if not for the game before it. But I'm gonna be breaking down one of Wesley's favorite offensive plays and how to run it properly. All right, guys. So to break down Wesley's game plan, we're gonna go over two plays he absolutely loved running. Now, these plays are very, very vital to his offense. So pay close attention. Now he was using Rich Gannon. So in replacement to that, I'm actually gonna go ahead and use Patrick Mahomes. However, I'm going to make sure my tight end has a hot route apprentice. Excuse me. So Travis Kelsey, due to the fact that I can put him on routes. And Wesley loved doing that with his tight ends. So we are in the playbook of the Carolina Panthers. Like John Beast, he also used a bunch offset. And he ran the two plays, Z spot and go and flood. Now I'm going to put flood in my audibles, as you see right here. His first play he went to was Z spot and go. And mainly this was against a man or match front that Wesley loved to run. What a lot of these Madden pros like to do is they like to press, shade up, and then put outside clouds there and put this depths at 20 yards so you can't throw any crossers. Now, what Wesley realized was, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to streak that tight end to clear that safety if he follows. I'm going to smart route Tyree Kills route because it is a man-beating route. Then I'm going to put B on a, a um, out route to clear out that X factor or one step ahead. And then just cross and put the playmaker on a drag. Now, even if it wasn't the playmaker, that's fine. But he mainly would try and do that so he can beat man. Now, you're going to see Tyreek Hill is going to get separation immediately because this route is shortened and his cut's a lot harder. So let's go ahead and see this real quick. If we pass lead it up, you see Tyreek Hill. And that's not just him being 99 speed, guys. That's him actually toasting his man. So overall, I would highly recommend you guys mix this in your offense because Wesley, what he would do is if he noticed Wesley was in a, or excuse me, Drini was in a match or just a heavy man to where he's like, okay, you're going to have to beat these one step aheads. Obviously what Drini knew was, hey, he's going to have to beat my one step aheads and I'm cool with that. And Wesley's like, you know what? That's fine. Not an issue at all. I'll just do my little cover two, cover three beater and also man to man beater. And I'll go ahead and bomb you over the top. And even though it's Tyree Kill, I understand he has 99 speed. But at the same time, it's very easy to cook someone over the top. Even if they're shading up. I will clearly shade up over the top. And as you guys see right here. Uh, excuse me, let me put him in a curl flat. There we go, shade up over the top. There we go. And as you guys see, we're shading up over the top. We're playing deep. Now, again, we're going to streak our tight end. We're going to put B on an out route, and we're going to smart route RB. And then for good measures, let's pretend X is our playmaker. We're going to put him on a, a, a drag. And as you guys see, we're going to get insane separation over the top. It's just not fair. And overall, it makes for a very easy man beater. So let me go ahead and show you guys why Wesley went to this and why it works so well against Dreamy. All right, so an instant replay, you see, even though the coverage is shaded up and they're backing up, Tyreek Hill's gonna beat his man. It doesn't matter 
who the receiver is or the route running. Route running kind of matters, but still, as long as he has decent speed, decent route running, that is a man-beating route every single time. He's going to get separation and really make the difference, obviously, when we go ahead and swerve that catch. Now, what Drini realized was, okay, Wesley's going to try and go over the top at midfield. I'm going to go ahead and have a deep zone always on the curl side and always on that zone side of that bunch because Wesley knew, hey, he's going to play man-to-man -man coverage. So what he do is something like this where he'd obviously put the coverage like this and leave him there so he can't get beat deep. Well, still, this route is known to toast man-to-man -to -man even if you have a deep zone. And it's because that A route ends up bumping him and ends up really making a difference. You see the A route ends up dragging him long enough to where I can go ahead and fit it in. And still, even though we have a deep half there, that tight end route is meant, and it's not just a wasted streak, it's meant to pull him in so we can throw this route. And Wesley knew that. Wesley said, hey, I know that side there's a deep half. I know there is. So what I got to do is I got to drag him out with the tight end, and I got to throw it up. And as you guys see right there, we can go ahead and do that. And if I rack catch that, I probably have a nice, easy touchdown. But we're going to go with the safe route and possession catch it for a very, very simple game. Now, the second play that Drini would, or excuse me, that Wesley would run on Drini that he knew, and he went to this play a lot, is Flood. So even with shaded up coverage and also a X'd out cornerback in Jair Alexander, we're going to go ahead and show you how good this unbumpable is. Now, this is kind of the stock setup first stock setup that my man Wesley would go to he would go ahead and out of flood he'd put his tight end because again he had Rich Gannon with hot route master but mainly he'd only really put his tight end on any special routes put him on a crosser he'd then drag X and then what he would do is obviously go ahead and leave RB as is as it's a man beating route now McCole Hardman if he saw he was in a man and he saw he was getting aggressive he'd motion over that receiver and before he sets He'd snap it so he gets a glitchy run off the line. You guys are going to see right here, snap it right about there. We have a one-play touchdown. And Patrick Mahomes is definitely not missing that throw. And we're able to go ahead and get in there. So Wesley would notice that. And this is one of John Beast's favorite play too. As you guys saw, if you watched the game, you may have noticed John Beast was quick hiking it and throwing it. Now I'm going to go into instant replay and show you why Wesley didn't have to do that against Drini and why Drini really had no shot at stopping this play overall because of the defense he was in. Now, if you guys go to insert play, you're going to notice again, I wait, I wait, I don't snap it yet. I snap it now before he sets and he gets a glitchy release off the line. As you see, everyone gets bumped. Everyone gets bumped. Obviously our tight end's not getting bumped, but at the same time, everyone gets bumped. And why is it our receiver doesn't get bumped on the right? Because it's an unbumpable. And what Drini was doing was he was trying to play shallow zones on that side and what Wesley would do is he would wait. Obviously, he never really had a shot to go to this route too much. But Wesley forced Trini into putting that deep corner, or not that deep corner, that deep safety and a deep blue to take away that route. Leaving a lot of stuff underneath. Which now leads me to the third and final play. And this is probably the play Wesley used the most against Trini. Now, Wesley's third and final setup was to see if Drini would give him bombs again. What I mean by that is to give him these unbumpables again. Now, he would test the waters for a play and see, okay, he's playing over the top. What a lot of Madden players like to do is always play over the top. Now, if he was playing underneath, he would be able to bomb him. But if he's playing over the top, it wouldn't make much sense to go to it. And mainly, Wesley knew this. So this is the third and final set. The one he used the most, what he would do is block his running back, put his tight end on a crosser, put his outside receiver on a hitch, and then put B, the solo guy, on a drag. Now his first read would be this X receiver. He'd go ahead and motion, snap it real quick, and then low ball it right there. Now you notice if they are in an over-the-top defense, they shade up, that corner, as I go to instant replay, is going to freeze for a second. He's going to wait because he thinks that the receiver, he's instructed to play over the top. He's like, okay, I'm not going to fall for this trick. It could be a stop and go. So he turns his back. He's running backwards. As you see, these corners are playing over the top. But as you see, he cannot get there. He possibly cannot get there. Even with Acrobat, even one step ahead, he cannot get there. Those low ball hitches will absolutely destroy any type of man-to-man. -man. And Wesley noticed that. So when Drini would shade over the top, and, and once he shaded over the top, he'd go ahead and put these guys in obviously deep zones. He'd make it to where, okay, you're going to have to guard one, and I'm not going to tell you which one I'm going to. If I can throw the quick hitch, I can. 
But the second read, and I thought this read was a brilliant type of read, was he'd go to A. Now, A, obviously, if I can go ahead and throw that, as I got a weird animation with Patrick Mahomes, I can beat my man. And notice that's a corner that's a lot faster than my man, Travis Kelsey. Even with the shaded up coverage, he's a lot faster than Travis Kelsey. And it doesn't matter. It really does not matter because this play is designed to beat man. The formation is designed to beat man. And Wesley knows that. So again, we can throw to A all day. I can pass lead that up. Doesn't matter. That corner's not getting back there. And I have a one play touchdown with my man, Travis Kelsey. However, if you do go ahead and guard that, and if you do take your user to guard that, well, we'll just go ahead and take our low ball hitch because Wesley's very disciplined. If you guys notice when he plays, he is going to take what the defense gives you. As you guys see right there, we didn't even have to low ball that, and that's shaded up. So mainly that hitch is going to be there as long as they shade up all the time. But Wesley understands you have to take what the defense gives you. If you watch the game, what did Wesley do to win? He threw his drag immediately because uh, Drini Blitz didn't try and go for a crazy play, stayed calm, was cool with collecting a yard, and he scored off of that play. And that's why this offense right here is so freaking deadly because you can attack deep, you can attack shallow, you can make your opponent get completely uncomfortable, get out of their man-to-man -man principle defense, and switch it up. And that is the goal, and that's why Wesley is probably the best offensive player in the world and he's able to use these plays effectively. All right, guys, I know that was a bit of a long video, and like I said, I appreciate you guys if you stuck until the end. Road to 11 came in, cannot wait. I'm hoping to hit this in a month. Guys, subscribe if you're new. If you want more of these pro breakdowns, let me know. I got more interviews coming along. We got a big Madden YouTuber next time. Guys, we got some gameplays coming. I know I keep saying that and teasing it, but it's coming, trust me. Man, this is gonna be a good year for us. I'm really excited to have you guys along for the ride. So like I said, if you haven't already subscribed, I'm sorry I'm selling out right now, but I'd really appreciate it if you did. So you don't miss any content. Guys, this is JTIP signing off. Hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, peace.